I've never been to Japan before and have zero self-control in buying merchandise. So imagine how conflicted I was when Pokemon himself offered to fly me out all the way to Yokohama, Japan for their world championships. <coughs> Hashtag Pokemon partner. So I packed my bag, brought an empty one because, come on. I got to visit the local hell of LAX and then I took to the skies. In hopes of getting on a decent Japanese sleep schedule right from the get-go, I slept on my plane for six hours and then scripted another video that required me to skim through 30 hours of Sonic Adventure 2. My job's kind of weird. And after landing in the Tokyo airport, I was greeted by the one and only Hatsune Miku. It was a quick hello, sure, but... We'll be seeing her again soon. And it was around this point when it finally hit me. I was in Japan. Like, place Japan. I mean, I grew up being obsessed with Pokemon, and now I'm being flown out by the exact same company to visit Japan? Like, I've done a lot of cool things on this channel, but this is a genuine dream come true and the start of the greatest trip of my entire life. But the first thing I noticed was that the entire city was decorated for Pokemon worlds. From stairs in the airport to banners on the side of the road, and there was even art scattered all across Yokohama. So after checking into this beautiful hotel room, thank you Pokemon by the way, what do you think was the first thing I did? McDonald's. I know this sounds dumb, but my stupid American brain has this deranged fixation on trying chain food in other countries. So hey, here's my current McDonald's tier list. Needless to say, McDonald's is pretty damn good. I got a big order, but I tried a McDouble with egg on it, had the best McNuggets of my life, and whatever the hell this thing is. Also, their menu featured a double Big Mac, and that's like the most American thing I've ever heard of, so why haven't I ever heard of it? Uh, note from future me, I tried it, and now I wish I didn't do that. Oh, I guess this is a good time to mention that I don't know how to speak Japanese which probably isn't too much of a surprise. I mean, I learned how to read the hiragana alphabet through Duolingo, but like, what good is reading the words if you don't know what they mean? Sure, I knew a few phrases going into this trip, but I immediately realized it was gonna be harder than I thought because I didn't even mean to order egg on that McDouble. Since my first day was really only my first half day, I spent the rest of the night by finding an arcade, checking out some other stores, and finding some incredible street performers. And then I learned about the Holy Land of 7-Eleven. No, 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 not 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. Take what you know about this place and just throw it out the window. Because in Japan, 7-Eleven is revered as a holy land. Not only is the hot food, like, genuinely delicious, but they have everything you could ever ask for. From groceries, to porn, to pre-made meals, to Hatsune Miku tickets, all the liquor in the world, and even manga. I don't think manga was the most surprising thing I just said. So I grabbed the newest issue of One Piece and nothing else, and even though I had no idea what they were saying, it still felt special. On the next day, I got to meet up with the Pokemon team and all the other content creators they flew out. Personally, I'm pretty bad at meeting new people because of, uh social anxiety. But everyone was so nice to me, I almost forgot how anxious I am as a person. <laughs> almost. Then we got to visit the Pokemon Center in Sunshine City and even got to tour their sweets cafe. And if that wasn't enough, Pokemon even helped justify my excessive spending by sponsoring this video. Did you know that you can take on special 7-star raids in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? They host tons of exclusive Terror Raid Pokemon and from October 6th to 9th and October 13th to 16th, you can capture a 7-star Hisuian form Decidueye. These battles may be available to all, but they're not going to be easy, so make sure you have some strong Pokemon ready for these raids. And in case you want more, they're going to have exclusive raids all year for you to find several other unique Pokemon in. You have to become an Academy Ace first by rematching every single gym leader in the game defeating all opponents in the Academy Ace Tournament, and after you finish a few more five-star raids, Professor Jacques should then call you and then grant you access for all of the bigger ones. Also, you do not want to miss out on part one of the new DLC expansion. The Teal Mask is a phenomenal expansion upon the world of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that I've already played through and caught every single Pokemon in, so expect to see that in a video somewhere down the road. The Teal Mask introduces new legendaries, new characters, new little guys, new Pokemon, and most importantly, the most adorable thing you have ever seen. Oh my god, I love her. So click the link in my description and make sure to play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet today. And again, thank you to the Pokemon Company International for sponsoring today's video. Uh, so where was I? Ah, so after the Swedes Cafe, Pokemon boarded us up on a charter bus like a middle school field trip and took us straight into Chinatown. I tried some street food that was uh, phenomenal and even got to try Japanese Dr. Pepper. 
Tastes like Dr. Pepper. I also did the touristy thing where I just go up to a shrine and point at it, but then had the strangest culture shock when I got lost in a random convenience store. Every product, like ever, is currently collaborating with another product. I, I guess to put it in other words, it's like Fortnite. Everything here is like Fortnite. I refuse to explain myself further. And I don't know how this one happened, but I made a few wrong turns and ended up in a wild Japanese arcade that held me hostage until I finally got this goddamn dragon air. Of course, there are tons of other cool prizes scattered throughout the arcade, but I was dedicated to the point of being classified as financial ruin. Yeah, I might have spent about 10,000 yen. They also had a tiny little Sprigatito plush that I eventually got. Oops. After that, I was done, but I just want to talk about the coolest prize I saw, which was this little mermaid figure. Like, out of all the anime figures I saw in Japan, this was by far the coolest one, and I don't know why. Little did I know, those two purchases were the start of many, many more. Then Pokemon took us to this gorgeous tea garden, and uh, trust me, videos do not do this place justice. We even got to watch a tea ceremony, let the tea master do what he does best. And then Pokemon served us this whole dinner, and then took us out to a buffet afterward. I don't really- they just wanted us- I, I don't get- that's a lot of food. So when that was all over, I hopped on the magic school bus and met up with a few friends for drinks after. And I don't remember the rest. This was the day where everything suddenly started going wrong. Unfortunately, all the creators got granted early access to the Pokemon World's pop-up merch store. Look, I've been to a good amount of pop-up stores, and what me and my wallet both expected was like a tiny little store that may have like a few exclusive items. But I was very incorrect. Like, of course they rented out a giant convention center for Worlds, but what I didn't know was they rented out another convention center next door to sell merch. So Jesus Christ, uh, let me reassure you, I was not prepared for this and neither was my accountant there was just so much stuff there like this deck of cards i bought for 30 dollars that i later found on ebay for oh, oh my god but this place had like an egregious amount of exclusive merch from switch cases to decks to figures to plushes to cups to stickers to full kitchen sets jackets shirts cards and tons of other stuff i have never even seen before so with a couple heavy bags by my side i checked out and saw an incriminatingly high number like a number around 270,110 yen. And for what it's worth, the goal of this video isn't to flex my financial incompetence, it's really just a cry for help. This day was honestly pretty packed because our next field trip was to Creatures Headquarters. You know, the place where cards get made? They let us explore the office and have some Q&A sessions with some higher ups in the company, but the coolest part was that they let us make a Magnemite. You know all of those cute little Pokemon cards that are all just made out of clay? Yeah, the lady who made those was just there. Gave us all the materials to make her own, and, uh, mine turned out unique. When we finally left Creatures, it was pretty damn late. And I was like 16 hours of jet lag kinda tired. But who cares, cause tomorrow we're going to Shibuya. You know, the place where you spend money? I finally got to meet my hero, Sprigatito, and then came across a dangerous entity known as the Tokyo Nintendo Store. It was the season of Pikmin 4, so their shelves were loaded with everything I could ask for. Pins, hoodies, plushies, designer sweatshirts, and even Bulborb coin purses. Oh, what if you're a Zelda fan? What if you're a Splatoon fan? What if you'd like to experience what it's like to buy an amiibo and not scalp for prices? Also, I was shocked to see actual Splatoon guns and this one Zelda plush with a big ass five head, but what surprised me the most were these charming Mario pillows with a beautiful brush stroke design. I am a helpless consumer designed to buy products. They even had figures that I have never seen before. Like, look, I have worked on this channel for nearly a decade at this point, and all of that work has come to fruition right now for me to spend all of my money in Japan. Well, at least it was better than the Pokemon Center from the other day. So what if I told you there's another Pokemon Center? This was a bit more of a traditional merch store that sold about exactly what you'd expect to. A good amount of stuff here could probably be found online. But as for the other exclusive stuff... Yeah, I bought that shit too. I mean, I don't even think it's that I'm bad at saving money. 
I think it's that I'm really good at saving money and am now getting to spend all of it right here. This mall even had a Capcom store with a separate Monster Hunter section, which luckily only cost me a fraction of what the Pokemon stores did. Then I stumbled upon Jaden forming an entirely new hyperfixation, so I just ignored and kept walking. Somehow in doing so, I ended up in an Evangelion pop-up which featured art that went, like, comically hard. They also had themed Zippo lighters, hoodies, and another hole in my pocket. And then when I exited the store, I turned right and saw this. Which, sure. I stopped by one last store, bought some cards, and had some of the best food I've ever had. Which became something I said a lot this trip. To finish the night, I went to an orchestra, got dinner with a friend, and then had perhaps the most interesting fan interaction of all time. I came across a store dedicated to all things Shonen Jump, so I decided to look around in hopes of giving in to my materialistic urges. But then, like, a small child came up and pointed at me and just said, Sanji-san! Which was weird, but the mom quickly noticed, grabbed his arm, uh, apologized, and just left. Weird, right? I assumed it was just like a bad word for foreigner or something like that, but then I realized he didn't say San Ji San, it was just that I was probably the first blonde man he's ever seen, and he said San Ji San. So, moving on from all that, <laughs> this store was heaven. I know this is supposed to be a video about Pokemon, but look, just, just let me talk about this, okay? This place had charms, cups, shirts, hats, power, and the coolest mugs I've ever seen. So as you'd expect, <laughs> I bought nearly all of it. At this point, you just kind of expect my house to look like a shitty souvenir shop. Then I finished my night by just walking around, exploring the city, and getting 50 shades of fucked up again at karaoke and day five. After a half week of side quests and field trips, it was finally time for Pokemon Worlds to start. The opening ceremonies rolled out, and just like that, players from all across the globe were ready to compete for it all inside this incredibly well-decorated convention center. However, I didn't stay too long because I was a bit busy with returning to the merch store and buying every single one of my favorite Pokemon in Sitting Cuties form, and GOD! This is bad! Like, I've already purchased another two whole empty suitcases and spent another 80,250 yen. God, look at this addiction. Isn't it beautiful? So thanks again to Pokemon for buying my flight just for me to do this. And I'm pretty sure I paid my flight back at this point. They also gave me tons of free merch. And it, it's like, I, I don't even know how to carry this. This is genuinely too much. Where do you want me to? I, I don't need it. I, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But like, where do, where, where, where? Anyways, that night ended off with Pokemon showing off their new Path to the Peak animated series that's essentially just a battle shonen with breakneck pacing as this girl creates an Oddish deck and goes near undefeated before winning worlds. It's pretty and all, but like, damn, what a competitor. But for the next day, I had to hop on a plane bright and early because I had other plans in mind. After landing in Osaka, I took a taxi to the event of a lifetime. Hatsune Miku's Magical Mirai. That's right, I was finally going to see the Vocaloid legend up close and personal, but since the show didn't start for a few hours, I decided to do what I do best and go to yet another convention center of a merch store. Also, getting concert tickets for something like this in Japan is hard. Jaden and I both entered a raffle for them in like May and were lucky enough to get chosen as one of God's little favorites to print out Miku tickets inside of a 7-Eleven. Again, th this place is just a place of wonder over here. To nobody's surprise, the Miku Expo had such an insanely varied amount of high quality merchandise. I'm sure you're already expecting them to have Miku shirts, Miku backpacks, Miku glow sticks, as well as an even larger financially destructive merch booth where you can get everything you could possibly dream of. So we already know where this one's going, right? One quick outfit change and we were both ready for the show. Not only do we get lucky with pretty damn good seats, but I am taller than this entire country. So our seats were pretty damn great, but as expected, I couldn't film or possess dangerous goods. The show was incredible, it was breathtaking, it was life-changing, it was everything I could have asked for, but it was also copyright. But if you look in the crowd, I'm somewhere over here. So when I was leaving, this dumb, stupid American had to learn how public transit works, and then my phone had the audacity to show me that I'm walking about 10 to 20,000 more steps than normal. And it's like, yeah, I know, but you, you don't gotta be so loud about it. But no time to talk about it now, because today was finally the day for finals of the Pokemon World Championship, which I started watching from bed. I mean, I'm in Japan on a Sunday morning. I get to watch new One Piece episodes live as they air, and like, 
What an insane episode to watch live. So after one of One Piece's best anime episodes concluded, it was time to walk down to the convention center and witness multiple champions be crowned as winners of Pokemon's World Championship. Some competitors tapped their screens really hard, some of them just played Mew, and some of them... Yeah, I don't even know what's going on here. And then for the final competition of the day, VGC crowned an entirely new champion. Watching this entire tournament was so fun and inspiring, and in case you missed it, they announced that Worlds next year is gonna take place in Hawaii. Which was a little ill-timed. And then made up for it by showing off new cards, new Pokemon, new moves, and whatever the hell this thing is. My experience here was genuinely unforgettable, and I am so grateful to the Pokemon Company for finally giving me an excuse to visit Japan. I mean, like, I play modded games and say fuck, so I'm just as surprised as you are that I was here. So now what? Sure, worlds might have ended, but I extended my trip in Japan for two more weeks and stayed in the cutest little Airbnb imaginable as the greatest... Like, the absolute greatest days of my life took place. Just me and a few friends exploring these beautiful cities, eating lots of getting the best food I have ever had. Even seeing multiple of my favorite artists live, which is crazy to me. I even had my best theme park experience at Universal Studios Japan. And if I can be honest, this trip was just about enjoying the first vacation I've had since Alpharad started. Like nearly 10 years ago. I started this channel in January of 2014. I had a very normal first year of college and in January of 2015, it all blew up. From that point forward, I focused on work to an obsessive degree that definitely caused me to live a pretty unhealthy and unhappy life in just terms of how little attention I was paying to friendships, relationships, and just not really enjoying life to the fullest or even to the, to the halfest. This might be a bit much, but I felt like a husk of a person and dedicated myself to making content and never really stopped to ask, are you happy? Is this what you wanted? But over the past few years, I felt like I had to finally start asking that question because I, I was miserable. I've tried to focus on unplugging from social media, making plans with my friends, exploring activities outside of my comfort zone, and really most of that just stems from an attempt to preserve my mental health as much as I can. I don't think I always had the best grasp on investing my time into things that properly mattered, nor understood what it meant to put yourself forward. I mean, obviously, I'm so grateful for the size of this YouTube channel and all the incredible perks that come with it. Like, let's keep it a buck. I am so incredibly grateful for how much money this channel has generated. I am so grateful for everything the people, you, have directly and indirectly allowed me to do. And as weird and pretentious and YouTuber millionaire as it sounds, I kept chasing it and chasing it in hopes of becoming happy and when that didn't work, I felt stumped, depressed, tried new things out of desperation and was ultimately just confused. It's hard to realize that not everything is truly worth your time, but it's also hard to realize that the things that feel like they don't matter do if they make you happy. Does that make sense? I don't know if it does, but what I'm really trying to say is that all I really want to do is live my life, explore the world, and make silly little videos for you in the meantime. I love creating content, do not get me wrong. I couldn't have gone through all those years of helplessly grinding if I didn't. But I have slowly learned that there is so much more to life than spending every day trying to create a viral video or letting all these numbers determine your entire well-being. And it's hard because like, here's the thing about YouTube, if, if you don't understand it, it's a weird job where the amount of time you put into it is typically directly proportional to how much you get out of it. And that is dangerous. I don't know why I decided to dedicate a section of this video to my sudden change in worldview, but it felt important to me when writing the script. Which means it's important to me, you know? I can't say I've always had the most stable life, and I know I usually keep those personal details pretty private, but I just want you all to know I'm happy. Not just because of this trip, but everything in my life right now leaves me something to be happy about. I am just really happy.
happy nowadays and it makes me even happier to say it out loud. It wasn't easy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hell, it took five years of therapy. But I am so glad that I took that time for myself on this trip and when it finally came time to go home, I spent the morning of my last day walking through the Tokyo heat for about a full three hours as if it was my own personal farewell to this trip that meant so much to me. It was beautiful and it was peaceful and it just felt like I got to be alone with myself in a good way. So when it came time to pack my eight suitcases, yes, that's right, it's been two weeks, you haven't been updated, I have eight suitcases now. And might or might not have spent a bit more money since the last update. Anyways, this Tetris god I found on Uber fully packed his SUV, drove me to the airport, and when it was time to board the plane and fly home, I had 10 hours to kill, and I wrote this entire script, then passed out and woke up in America. But this story has one final chapter. I know this entire video felt like I was just hoarding all of Japan's merchandise within these eight fully packed suitcases, but I had a bigger goal in mind. I can sit and speak about all this growth I've had over the past few years, but none of it would have been possible if not for the incredible people that I've been lucky to keep so close to me. I have a large friend group I know, but each and every one of them mean everything to me. They challenge me, they inspire me, and simply help me become a better person through leading by example. So let me ask you this. You've been working the same job for a decade. It pays incredibly well, and you owe it all to your friends. What would you do next? So my good friend, Mr. Jacob Alpharad, you might have heard of him. My friend and boss, <laughs> Jacob Alpharad. I don't know if I'm supposed to do intro for this or anything. He went to Japan and he bought everyone. So it's a mystery box. And uh, he spent a lot of money, but not on himself. <laughs> and gave all of us, his friends, large boxes of shit from Japan. I don't know what I got here. So I'm gonna, we're gonna find out together, huh? Wait, can I even show this on screen? Okay, I'm gonna open it, but you don't look. The first thing that I see pop off is the, is the little Kirby shell. Dude, this is hard to open. There we go. What's the first thing? What the fuck is this, dude? Wait, I... Shit, I... How did I lose something already? Quite a number of objects. As you can see, Jay got me a very mentally normal collection of gifts and merchandise from Japan. <laughs> I cannot show that on stream. I literally can't show this on stream chat. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm really excited because I get to be a furry. Go the fuck out! <laughs> you fucking, you, you, this one? Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. Which looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> Look at it, it's a sitting cutie! This is actually super sick. Uh, we have a Dragon Ball. I mean, do I even have to say that he's like my favorite Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> why am I fascinated? It's magnetic. This might be this might be the most beast fire badass shit I've ever seen, honestly. Oh my look at look at this. Oh my I don't have this amiibo. Really pretty holographic Tinkaton. I love Tinkaton. Look at this. It's Megumi. I love Megumi so much, dude. Look at this shit. And we got Bison. Okay, never mind. This is my favorite suit. The Street Fighter suit. Uh, I got probably the sickest jacket in the entire world. Uh, it's reversible. It looks awesome. It's got gold sleeves. There's shanks on the front and on the inside. <clears throat> Why do they, uh, they, they conveniently have her big fat cans cropped out of this image. I don't know if he knew this. It might have just been a, a soul read, but I love Robin Williams' genie. Oh my god, I'm gonna wear this to the gym every single day for the rest of my life. <laughs> of course. Look at him. Oh, this is so inefficient, but. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I've... that looks so cool. <gasps> the fucking Marshall. Cool. My boy, Captain Kid. Uh, sexy babes. This is really nice. I like this. Yo, Snoopy. A Miku automaton. No shot. This is he. Yo, Miku card mat. Let's go. Look at that. He's got Mario and he's running. 
and it's just the Mushroom Kingdom. I'm geeking at this. This is definitely my favorite bag. Oh, the same guy, though. <laughs> Inkling. Splatoon statue. Oh my god, look at <laughs> Bro. Wait, okay, Mario Go kind of goes hard. Ta-da. That's where the chopsticks will live. So it's like, it's, you can see it's like a little wonky, and then on the back, it's got this spread of characters, which is really, really cool. Huh? Yes! <laughs> oh my god, look at him. Jacob knows me so well, I feel like I don't even really mention it too much anymore, but like, if you've known me for a while, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. How do you find something like this? Oh my god. Next, we have my favorite little guy. I love this guy. Big boy. Big boy, but little boy at the same time. He's so good. Raul, look at this boy. Look at this fucking awesome dude. Guys, come on. How can you not love Booper, right? He's got like the biggest, biggest smile. <laughs> my goat, my son. This guy, the way he's built is insane. My baby boy. Oh my gosh. He's just a baby. He's just a little guy. Mm. Yep, we're still shocked. Still can't Every read it. Every single time. I barely know English. <laughs> Rodon washing machine. Wait, no, vacuum cleaner. Rodon vacuum cleaner. I know the difference. I've already seen the boys. One and two, one and two. Like, I feel like I could just, like, just, you know? Super! Oh, that's awesome, dude. Hi, you Volume 1 in Japanese. I have it in English, but this is sick as fuck. There's so much more than I expected. <laughs> wait. I love the design. I love the white and the blue brim. <laughs> I love it so much! A Pikmin pouch thing. I don't know... I don't know what you can really fit in here. Top Team Epic Funny Manga. I do love this show. I've never read the manga. I, I will be reading this. Look at that. See, look, all their art is beautiful. This shit is so cool. Oh my god, it is a Hatsune Miku bag. <gasps> There's a lot that he, he remembers. He sent Ross these sick One Piece mugs, and I'll definitely be drinking out of the Shanks mug every day. Thanks, Jacob. Sanji shirt. Oh, it's gonna be flipped. Oh, fuck. If I recall Super Nintendo World, look at the, look at the booze. A lanyard with my boys! I love them all so dearly. Cause I don't I don't understand what the fuck Pokemon cards are, man. Zoom in the camera, I don't know how. Your Sanji saying some live shit, probably. Even more KJ Kid, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not sure if you uh meant to give me two of them, but uh sorry. They're mine now. No fucking shot. No way. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good time in Japan. I don't know what else to say. Thank you. That was that that's really awesome. Everybody subscribe for your fucking cringe. <laughs> <laughs>